Globalisation has hit UK textile companies hard. In the Scottish borders town of Hoyk, many factories have closed. But on the other side of the river, Johnson's, the Kashmir clothing specialist, has resisted competition from high-volume, low-cost factories like these in China. The company claims quality is the path to continuing survival. What the Chinese luxury consumer wants is not a product made in China. And so the Chanel's, the Burberry's, the Louis Vuitton's want product that's coming out of Europe, principally out of Scotland, thank goodness. So the product authenticity and provenance are really, really important now, and that's very good for what's left of the industry. To get that quality, Johnson's strategy is to control its entire production chain. But does this work? In Mongolia, it buys directly from the farmers that gather the cashmere wool from goats. In Scotland, this is spun, dyed and woven in Elgin, and it's knitted and finished in Huyk. We're now, crucially, at the end of the chain, a design team fashions the knitwear to the latest trends. Literally, 10, 12 years ago, we only had one designer in the entire company. And we realised that to compete globally, we had to have differentiation, we had to give customers reason to buy. We've now got 14 designers between the two sites, and that has given us an edge. But only 30% of Johnson's sales come from clothes sold under its own label. The other 70% relates to clothes made for high-end fashion companies such as Brora, Mulberry and Hugo Boss. Yes, I love so this knit, James. What is this yeah. demands a close relationship with these companies. It's very flexible and that is not something you're going to get from a lot of companies to be able to do that for you, manufacturers. But because nearly all Johnson's 870 workers are based in the UK, this is a high-cost gamble. Well, this is a company that's been in existence for more than 200 years. All the knowledge it's amassed over that time has given it a lot of confidence, and some of that it's put into a strong investment program over the past 20 years, where it's spent 35 million on new machines. Um, this combination of new machinery using some of the best technology from the 21st century it's been able to marry that with some old techniques all the way back from the 19th century. If, if you can get all those things right, then you're in a very good position to survive and do well in 21st century Britain. This is Peter Marsh for the Financial Times in Hoyk in Scotland.